pharmacist Victor Wong now to talk about the do's and don'ts of the medicine cabinet. A lot of us are doing it wrong, Victor. So let's talk about where you should store your medicine and how you can organize it. First of all, let's start with the this. This is the don't. Right, exactly. This is the wrong way to do things. So what's wrong with this picture? Yeah. Well, um, everyone's familiar with spring cleaning. Yes. But how many times do we actually go through our medicine cabinets and actually clean it out per year, especially since it's such an important part of our family's health? Absolutely. Um, so you're absolutely right. I brought two medicine cabinets here. This is the wrong one. That's a good one. Okay. Um, but before we begin, I want to talk about where we should actually keep our medicine cabinets. Okay, so a lot of people would think the bathroom's just fine. Right, exactly, which is in fact the worst spot. Mm -hmm. The bathroom's really hot, it's very moist, has a lot of humidity, and in fact this humidity can actually get into the tablets and actually compromise how effective they are. Okay, what's a better place? So try to keep it in your be uh, bedroom, maybe on your nightstand. Okay. Um, but the most important thing, I know you have two young kids, mm -hmm. um, important to keep it away from children. Yeah, these are not children's vitamins. No. <laughs> you don't want them downing this first thing in the morning yeah, after so their cereal. For instance, taking a look at this nice medicine cabinet we got from Ikea, it does have a lock and key. Yeah. So this would be a perfect medicine cabinet Smart. To, uh, to have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, the first thing to do when checking your medicine cabinets is to check for expiry dates. Mm -hmm. So every single... Um, vitamin, um, medicine, and um, bottle or, or packaging will have expiry dates on it, just like this one here. You can always find it. It's there somewhere. So, okay, right. so it's right there in teeny tiny little writing. Um, but if you don't look at that, you, you could be in a bit of trouble. Because what happens if you're using expired medication? Exactly. Especially for your kids. So taking expired medication um, is not a good thing. Yeah. Um, it's safe most of the time. Yeah. However, there are those one or two medications uh, that can actually cause harm. So for instance, this is one of them here. This medication is minocycline. Okay. It's an, an anti-acne medication that's an antibiotic. Mm. And if this medication is taken after it expires, it can actually cause harm to the kidneys. Okay. So my motto is, when in doubt, throw it out. Absolutely. Yeah. And there are places you can actually throw this out. Can you take this to a shopper's drug mart and get it disposed of? Exactly. Yeah. So It's a um, safe way to do it. Yeah. And, and the benefit is that we actually have um, a system and a program where we can actually mm -hmm. take the medications and dispose of it in an environmentally friendly way. So don't Very flush nice. down the to tar toilet and uh, don't throw in the garbage bag. Do not flush down the toilet. Okay. Is there anything else that's wrong with this medicine cabinet? Yeah. So once you've uh, cleaned out all of the medications, yeah. um, pay attention to e even things that you normally wouldn't think about, just like these um, antibacterial bandages. Yeah. So even bandages can expire. Right. So these ones have um, antibiotics in them. So you mm. want to make sure that when you actually have to use them, that they're okay to use as well. Okay, so they haven't run out and the adhesive is not not working anymore. You want to make right. sure your band-aids are good. That's right. So over here, you've done sort of a labeling here. So you've got mom, dad, why is that important? Right, so it's important to keep the medications organized because mm -hmm. you don't want family members taking the wrong medications. Right. So we've done a really good job in terms of getting a label maker and actually dividing the shelves for each individual family member. Very nice. You don't want to take daddy's Prozac. That's right. There's one for mom. It's not for everybody. Uh, one for dad, one for the kids. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> one for the kids. You definitely don't want them taking it. And anything else we need to know? A quick tip before yeah. we... Uh... And, and lastly, keep all the essentials on hand. Yeah. Um, fever and pain. Have some life brand acetaminophen, ibuprofen. Um, have some stomach medications for heartburn. Uh, for cuts and scrapes, um, bandages and antibacterial ointments. Uh, and also, it's cold and flu season coming up, so yeah. you want to have something on hand just in Absolutely. case. Absolutely. Victor, thank you so much for that.